Welcome to FM Evolution. I'm your host, Sean Black. Welcome back to another show and another day of learning experiences we go through and increase our FM knowledge. I'm so excited to be talking to a awesome company. Uh, we had Fexa on last, well, it's actually been about almost three years now since Fexa was on. And today I'm always uh, excited because we get to talk about innovation and software and all kinds of really fun stuff. Um, I know Fexa was really designed specifically for the end user in mind and, and their, their claim of fame really is this flexibility in what they can do. Um, so with all that flexibility, I'm really excited to see how things have changed uh, over the last three years and what's going on with them. And uh, today we have Connor McKee. Connor, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing very well. How are you doing today? Outstanding. Welcome to the show. And of course, Beth Mooney. Hi. So excited to have you guys. I like your background there. That's a nice little corporate background for Fexa. We try. <laughs> it doesn't, that is cool, though. I got to tell you, it's mm -hmm. Connor's. I don't know what's going on there, Connor. I know. Well, you got the guitar. It's That's swanky, man. That's true. I just can't believe that Beth remodeled her entire living room to look like that. That's amazing. <laughs> Commitment. <laughs> it really is. Hey, so as a, a way of getting to know you guys uh, and kind of selfishly my own list of things that I really like to get out of the show, we have a we always ask our guests what you guys are reading so i'd love to hear what you guys are reading connor why don't you start us off what are you reading today or sure just... thing actually i was prepared for this question i love it i know right i'm reading what if by randall monroe he is an ex nasa engineer turned cartoonist and in the book what if he addresses really absurd hypothetical questions with realistic like physical answers uh, it's pretty fun. It's a nice way of kind of showing that no matter what your profession, no matter what your skill set is, there's whimsy to be found everywhere. Always looking for the fun. Exactly. That's, that's the theme of my life. It's not fun. I don't want to do it. <laughs> that's cool. I love that. What a great book. Beth, what about you? Awesome. Um, I have two, actually. I just finished up Ghost Rider by Neil Peart. Uh, he was the drummer uh, for Rush and he passed away last January. So it's just a really, it's a neat story about his journey and what he went through with some personal tragedy and things like that. Uh, it's, it's deep, but it's very, very gratifying if you're a Rush fan like myself. Um, and the other I'm reading is called Stumbling on Happiness by Dan Gilbert. Um, he's, he's a Harvard psychology professor, but it's a, it's a witty, engaging book. Um, and it kind of just talks about how we, we tend to kind of predict our future based on our biases and our experiences. And that's not always the case because our brain kind of makes things up. So two, uh, two neat books for you there. Now, what was the title of that one? Stumbling on Happiness. Okay. That's going on my list. Cause I, that sounds like a really interesting book. I like psychology books though. Same. <laughs> I love it. Uh, it just, every time I read one, it helps me understand people better. And that's, uh, that's, that's quite a challenge to begin with because people are so complicated, but it's just an amazing uh, way of doing it and getting into the subjects and the psychology and stuff. It's, it, it's fascinating for me. Awesome. Great list. I'm going to be adding those to those. We'll put those in the show notes so people can check them out. Um, and so, yeah, let's get started on it. Fexa, what an amazing piece of software. And, and, and I'm excited to hear more about what you guys do. Uh, I wanted to kind of uh, let people know a little bit more about you individually. If you guys could tell us what you do at FAXA and, uh, and then maybe something that someone wouldn't know about you. Uh, sure, well, I'll happily go first. Uh, I'm Connor McKee. I'm the director of product development at FAXA, which means that I'm like one of the developer nerds, but I'm like the head developer nerd. It's very fun. I operate in the shadows. Um, but no, it's great. I get to do a lot of the technical work and get to help plan out the cool features that all of our clients end up using. Um, something people might not know about me is that I have an unhealthy love for board games. In fact, uh, I, I specifically was trying to choose where to sit today and I almost sat in front of a board game shelf with about 200 board games on it before I decided that might not be the right impression. <laughs> you know what? I love that. <laughs> All right, Beth, 
Um, that one's a hard one to follow. Um, but my, uh, I, so I'm the client director here at FEXA. I joined the organization just about two years ago. Um, I've been in the FM industry for a little over a decade. And previously I worked for the company called Nest where I sort of learned all about the industry. So uh, I get to lead the implementation teams and the support teams here and kind of combine my past and, and my experience with this technology platform. So it's a, it's a cool seat to be in to see it kind of all come together from this side. Um, so and something cool. folks might not know about me, I am, I am, I am a musical buff. So I played in a band, I play instruments, my husband and I do regular open mic sessions, um, anything music, it's, um, I'm your person. <laughs> nice. What do you play? I play keyboard and percussions. Wow. That's a lot of talent there. I don't, I don't have that kind of talent at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not musically inclined at all. I mean, uh, I think I can sing, but I really can't. So <laughs> it's so good though. It's so good. That's all right. Well, that's really cool. Um, so great to kind of get to know you guys and I'm, let's just kind of hop into this. There's so many things we got to talk to uh, or talk to you guys about. I have a lot of questions. Um, I think we should address the big one though, which is 2020 um, and what the heck happened there. Um, I know, I think we basically all survived and I think that we can uh, arguably now say that was probably one of the most challenging years of our careers, uh, you know, and probably most everyone else's as well. I know there's some people who did really well, um, who really were able to innovate and, 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 and shift and do things differently very quickly. So I'd love to hear from you guys on how 2020 uh, was a part of your business and, and, and how you handled it. Maybe Beth, Beth would be good for this. Yeah, yeah, 2020. So our motto was, uh, what a time to be alive, right? <laughs> um, when the pandemic hit last year, you know, the FEXA team was really already used to working in a remote environment. We're primarily remote. So from, a, 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 from that standpoint, it didn't really change, but we saw it impact every one of our customers. So that was kind of the initial thing. We kind of got together as a group and said, how can we maybe offer some tips out to our customers of just how to work remotely? So the whole team got together and we put a little article out and shared it. Um, and, and from there, it kind of was a springboard about how do we bring our community together, right? Not just our customers, but our friends of the industry. How do we bring our FM community together to share what everyone's doing? Because there wasn't a plan, there wasn't a roadmap. Um, so we, we were able to pull off four webinars with some amazing panelists and just really sort of share, you know, what folks were doing from different industries, different backgrounds and how they were, how they were shifting and how they were making it work. Um, you know, internally, we kind of took the opportunity to focus on, you know, product development and then uh, process improvement training. So we really didn't skip a beat with any of our customer service or, or delivery. We, we really improved it from my perspective. And then we ended the year just growing as a company, which was awesome, uh, despite all the challenges and are kind of poised and ready to accomplish more in 2021. That's awesome. You know, and it, I think every company dove head deep into digital this year because there's just no way of having some, any kind of plan for communication that was in person uh, as much as, and I loved being in person. I'd rather be in person anytime. Uh, I think it's, it's such a, a different experience, but we really had to dive into Zoom and, and dive into webinars. And I did some webinars. We did a bunch of stuff. And I watched the ones that you're talking about. I thought they were really good. And, and uh, I saw you guys had partnered up with Connects and I'd done a lot of stuff with different trade associations. And I, I was like, that's a good idea. And, and I, was, I thought it was really impactful. And it's good to be able to find ways to communicate with people that um, you know, when you're, you have to, <laughs> because there's no other way of doing it really. Um, and I, but I think it's going to impact the way we do business pretty much from here on out forever. So we'll have to find out and see kind of how that plays out. Uh, all right, Connor. So this is, this one's for you. I, I watched the innovation room podcast that, uh, you guys, the company was on, uh, I think it was, uh, Kim, it was Kim, Kim was on that one, Kim going. Uh, and it was really good. Um, there was some information about automation there. And you guys are, are a, I don't know, I, I would consider uh, a big part of getting things automated in people's lives and, and, you know, including reporting, all kinds of stuff. But one of the polls you had on your website was 
um, for FMs and, and what they were looking for. And it looks like the biggest thing they were looking forward to change their life was less hours mm-hmm. <laughs> and their <laughs> workplace. And I get that because it never stops. FM never stops, you know? So my thing is I really wanted to kind of understand, um, you know, what you guys are doing in the workplace and how effective it fits into this automation. And maybe you guys could kind of explain kind of what you guys are, are looking to do in the future for automation for, for FEXA. Certainly. And I think that actually ties back into your question about 2022. Automation was certainly a big focus in 2020, especially with reduced office hours, reduced channels of communication, things like that. Um, FEXA has always been, I mean, automation has been one of our core goals from before FEXA even began development from a design perspective. Uh, we had come from experience we had uh, with the previous uh, facility management platform. Uh, and what we found was that really everybody has their own way of doing things, but they have their own rules that they follow. And anytime you're saying a human has, follow, has to follow rules, that's something a computer can do. A computer understands rules as well as the person does. So from that came our idea of the configurable and uh, customizable workflows, uh, which are you know really part of the heart of FEXA is how those tie into all of our core operational objects. We have work orders and assignments and invoices, and they just naturally progress and in a way that's up to our users, but things move along through the stages and they behave in the way that they should behave. And that's what you'd expect from a a tool like this. Um, And what we've done is every time we have a big new feature, we look at how does this tie into our existing automation? How can this be automated? And really how do they, how do we marry the uh, two concepts uh, for instance, our communications are driven by a lot of the same automation that our workflows are driven by. Um, and really just looking further into it, the things that we have as uh, cool features now always have the ability to become more and more automated. And where I see us growing is um, more integration with external systems. That's a big thing. You know, right now we, Vexa can talk to accounting systems and other operational software. Uh, and the more of those systems we can talk to, the more time we're saving our users from going into another system, looking at information and typing it into FEXA. Nobody wants to be doing that. Uh, but there's a lot of opportunity in that area, even in a programmatic generation of work, our preventive maintenance programs, for instance. So that's my I, thoughts. I want to follow up with a question for you, and this is kind of off the cuff, but that is using something called an open API. Is that correct? We do make use of an open API for our integrations with external software. That's correct. So that's so important. I know, I think we and plus a lot of other companies are looking to find ways to integrate into other software platforms because it's just, there's so many things going on there that it's tough to kind of keep up with all the data entry. So having that open API is huge, I know for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, And we'll, I think we can get into that a little bit. I have some, I have some more questions for that. Sounds great. Yeah. and I did notice actually, Beth, as I was on your website and I saw actually, but this is on LinkedIn. I found that you guys did this Christmas video. Do you remember doing this? Oh, we remember. <laughs> <laughs> Funny story, Sean, about this video. We, we had a blast recording it, but we recorded it about two hours before our company holiday event. Oh, so no way. Just- Quick shout out to our marketing team who had a boatload of edits while we were in celebratory mode. (laughs) I just thought it was really cool. It looked like, I mean, again, it gives you back to this digital, uh, you know, diving into the digital pool here because there's no way of communicating really to clients that is really personable. You guys did a great job. I I thought it was fun. To me, it says a lot about your culture. um, And that kind of drove me to, I wanted to learn a little bit more about FEXA as, as a company and their culture. And I know you would be great to ask that. Sure, sure. Um, well, one of, our, one of our values is human first. And we, we are a FEXA family. That's what we call ourselves above everything else. So, you know, when 2020 specifically, when things got hard, you know, we, we talk and we're open as a group and it's judgment free. And, you know, we're here to really support each other as a family. Um, some, some other things we do kind of culture wise, we, we host a monthly happy hour where we either, you know, we may play games or we may just hop on and and have a conversation, but we've always got something going on once a month with the team. Um, we've done a few live game breaks in between the day, just to kind of break things up and helps everybody get to know each other better. Um, and then one of our methods of communication is Slack internally. 
So <clears throat> we've got, I don't know, 10 or so maybe Slack channels related to books or music or just events or things that are going on. And we're always, uh, always trying to connect with each other. And that sort of extends to, you know, outside of um, other situations that have happened, you know, the, we have a couple team members in Texas. So when the, the, the storms happen and the blizzards happen there, you know, we, we were able to kind of come together and adapt and really make sure that we stayed connected as, as humans first. That, I mean, that kind of says it all. That, that, I love humans first. It's so important. We, and we talk about company culture a lot on FM uh, evolution because along with leadership and all the other things that are important in innovation and, and, and tech, having a good company culture means the difference between uh, really being successful and not. And, and putting your, your team first is traditionally, I mean, it didn't used to be that way. It used to be all oh, customers first. Well, human first, and I love that, is really putting your team first is going to make all the difference in the world because they're going to turn around and serve the clients at the highest level they possibly could because they feel uh, that they're first. And that's, that's right. such a, a great point. I love that human first. Uh, I wonder who came up with that. Was that Kim or was that who came up with the slogan? That was probably Kim. Kim also sort of owns our Fex dictionary, if you will. So you were talking about how flexible we are. We like to say that we're flexible. So if we can't fexify a term, we find a new one. <laughs> Some people find that to be extremely annoying. Mm -hmm. We find it to be fexalent. <laughs> oh, you guys. <laughs> well, talking about being flexible, <laughs> I'd love to hear more about the flexibility. I know, um, uh, Connor, you talked about workflows and, and, and I know that that is one of the pillars of what you guys do is being flexible. And um, we touched on it a second ago, and I, I want to kind of jump into it as there's so many different platforms that we had to work with. Um, and every, and it seems like every single vendor or client or brand we work with has a different way of doing business. And it drives me nuts. I mean, it's just one of the challenges that we have to face as a vendor. And then I think even as from a brand standpoint, if they have multiple different vendors, they have to deal with the same thing, you know, because they're learning to work with them as well. So I wondered, uh, Connor, if you could kind of jump back into that and tell us a little bit more about the flexibility and how that works with you guys. Sure, absolutely. Uh, I think that as we've touched on clearly a couple of times already, flexibility is a big you know, part of what we've always considered to be a goal. Uh, one thing that I think makes flexibility, uh, a good part of FEXA and the way that it works with how we handle our clients and how we handle our product is that we like to have everything be configurable, but we also like to have a right and expected way to do things. Uh, what I've found in the past is that if you always bend over backwards for making it possible to do everything and you don't really give guidance, you, really, you try to be everything for everybody and then you're never good at anything. And, and that's not our goal. We always want to be flexible in such a way that we can say, you know, we have industry experience. We've we've made software of this kind before. We're uh, we're staffed by people who have worked in the sort of industries that consume this software, and we can guide people in how to use this and guide them towards better standards. I mean, combine knowledge here. We've we've seen everything one of our clients could ever hope to do, and sometimes we've seen some downsides that might not be obvious. That said. Uh, this focus on configurability means that we're never locking somebody out of their existing process. We're always giving them the option to do what they need and we're able to inform that. So workflows were a great example, uh, but there's a whole lot of other stuff. For instance, uh, permissions, uh, you know, a lot of uh, different pieces of software of our variety uh, tend to have either different applications for different kinds of users, or they have a very regimented set of permissions and ours is very configurable. But what we do is we say, you know, you could hide any field from any person, you could hide any screen from any person, you can hide individual parts, you could keep people from interacting with them. But even though we give you that power and you know, buzzword, um, we also find that that's too much for some people to really want to start with. Nobody wants to start and say, all right, my vendors need to see this field, this field, this field, and that field. Uh, so what we have is we have our, our defaults, we have our core experience, we guide people towards using it the way that we expect them to use it. We make that painless while still allowing for people to do things their way. Because every now and then you're going to get a very left field seeming request that seems like it's a terrible idea. 
And then somebody will explain the use case for it and we'll go, oh no, I never thought of that. And we don't write ourselves into corners, which is great. That's so cool. I mean, there's so much flexibility and I know that's awesome for you guys, but just, I know having going through the demo that having everything so searchable like that is, is it's insane because it's, I can't do that. I can't do that with other uh, pieces of software. And so um, I don't know, it's any, for anyone who uh, running reports is as painful as it is for me and, and dealing with that. Um, something like this is kind of awesome. Just saying. Uh, and I know that that's uh, a big part of what you guys do is being able to work with all these different. And like you said, you're not changing the way people do business. It's more like you're enhancing it, if anything. So I thought, thought that was pretty good. All right, guys, we, listen, we're running against a break. So we're going to take a break right now and we'll come back. And when we do, we got another question for Connor. Sounds great. Welcome back. <laughs> that went really quick. So welcome back from the break, you guys. I'm excited to continue our show at FM Evolution today. Again, we were talking with Fexa and Connor and Beth. I'm excited to have you guys back. Um, and we're going to jump into this because there's so much to the left to go over and only a short time to do it. Uh, all right, guys. So one of the things I wanted to cover here is this, and we talked about this kind of digital evolution and um, you know how it's really affecting FM. And even as long as I've been in FM, which is not that long, but it's been six years now, and uh, boy, time flies. Um, things have changed so dramatically. And I know there, it seems like every single person that we, we are working with now, it's like data, 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 data. And, then, and everything is driving their decisions for uh, their company now using and crunching all this data. I'd love to kind of hear um, what kind of innovations you guys have seen in FM and, and where do you think it's going to be going here in the future? Certainly, I don't mind taking the first swing at that one. Um, I mean, data collection is certainly the heart of what we do, isn't it? It's, you, do, <laughs> yeah. you get the data, then you put it somewhere. I mean, if we're really, I'm trying to talk myself out of a job, I'd say that's all I did. Um, <laughs> but but really, the, the ability to perform operations on data, the expectations for the things that people are doing with data, really just, I mean, even the enhancements on how we present data to people and how people expect to be able to consume uh, the information that comes out of that data have, have really changed dramatically. I mean, not just, I don't think even that's specific to this industry, just even in the realm of technology over the past decade, you know, mobile devices changed that and everybody being connected to so many things has changed that. Uh, I think a, a huge shift has to do with obviously how the reporting occurs. In fact, if I, you know, shameless self plug here for FEXA, keep your eyes peeled for something cool. That is another one of our buzzwords. Fexalytics is on the horizon and that's going to be the future of how we, uh, how we serve out data. Um, but beyond even that, uh, there's just, there's so many things you can do operationally, so many ways you can be conscious of your users and, and you can show them you respect their time because you understand them and how they use the software, you understand the data. And we didn't really have those ideas so much. Again, I mean, 10 years ago within this industry or within any other industry, nobody was, uh, nobody had the audacity to say, I don't, I want to be able to configure exactly when all these notifications come to me. I want to know exactly who else they're going to. I want to be able to manage these things in these particular ways that I know from other software, but new standards and, and new ways of presenting and collecting the data have really changed that. It's incredible, man. The amount um, of metrics that are being used to say that, yeah, you're doing a good job or you're not. Even in our, it, with NFM, there's so many metrics that they're, they're, you know, digging down to and going, yeah, your first time fix, you're at 75%. We want you at 90%. And, you know, and then it goes further deep into that, you know, with every single job, you can see what's going on. And it's incredible. Um, that kind of culture shift is, I think it's changing FM. It seems to me that we used to be more relationship centric. Uh, and I think we still are uh, for the most part, uh, but it, it, but it is definitely changing. The conversation is changing to uh, be more about SLAs and metrics than it is about uh, the relationship component. 
you know? I don't know. Yeah. I don't I think, think a big part of that shift too was, you know, uh, budget, budgetary constraints, you know, um, you know, different procurement companies, everyone looking at what's the best deal um, and what's going to get us that best value. So stricter contracts around some of those SLAs and around some of that data, you know, it really forces that level of accountability where I think the relationship is still there to your point, but it's just changed. And it's, it's changed. I think a lot of, a lot of, a lot around budgets. Yeah, no, I agree. Budgets are uh, key right now and people, and because of the ability to track this data in such a precise manner, people really kind of understand where they're spending their money and, and what they're getting for that money in a, in a way uh, more, you know, clear way of, uh, of understanding what's going on. And so it, it changes the way people make decisions. Uh, sometimes you can have the best company out there for a relationship, but they just can't get it together. And so they, so they, they don't, and they're gone, <laughs> you know, it just happens. And before you may not, you may, you know, vendors and brands may not see that type of performance, at least not in this matter. Well, one of the things I think uh, consistently comes up and it's come up on this show a couple of times uh, is artificial intelligence. And, you know, I think every single scary ass movie that I've seen about artificial intelligence kind of, uh, changes the way I feel about it, everything from, you know, Terminator to, you know, you name it. But I'd, I'd love to kind of get um, some feedback from you guys on artificial intelligence and what you guys, um, you know, kind of think it, it's going to affect the future of FM and, and how Fexley uses it or if they do. Sure, I can talk to that one. Um, actually, interestingly, uh, in 2016, when we were first laying the plans for Fexa, artificial intelligence is a big talking point. We actually had machine learning built into FEXA before we had invoicing. That's how early this was in our uh, process there. What we found with that is that everybody loves the idea of leveraging artificial intelligence for these things. I mean, you can, you can save human effort, you can you know, show off a cool feature. There's a, there's a lot of opportunity there with machine learning and artificial intelligence in general, uh, but nobody wants to be the first adopter of the self-driving car, right? You don't want to be the first person on your block who's going to find out, does this really work for me? Um, so what we actually found was that a lot of the things that we took the time to build out weren't immediately used by people. Uh, we, we had, as examples of this, we had uh, some machine learning that was used to determine positive or negative intent from textual feedback. So you know, a store manager could come in after an assignment, type something in that just said some work, and it would say, oh, right, this, this feels positive or negative. And that could be a flag for things. And uh, without a fail at the time, nobody wanted that. We had it, it was, wasn't desirable. Um, sim to a similar extent, we had actually uh, store managers could type in descriptions of work orders and it would try to assign them categories uh, and classes. And it was fairly reliable, but again, you don't necessarily want to adopt that until you've seen it in action for a really long time. So I think that that absolutely is the future. I think that automation uh, especially with, you know, using machine learning and artificial intelligence and all the things that we can do with computers now that we wouldn't, we would never have put into business applications in the past. Those are all things that we're working towards, but I think there's a user acceptance level that we're, we're just not quite there yet. I agree with you. I mean, I think people are still as much as, as a culture, uh, you know, in, in FM and around the country and around the world, we depend so much on technology now that I think there's still a level of trust that people get a little concerned with, you know, they, I don't know, yeah. having a, you know, artificial intelligence take over the world or something. I know people get a little freaked out about that. I think it's great. I, I'm all for it. It is a little scary, but I, I think getting the computers to learn and do the things they can do, uh, it's just going to drastically change our, our entire lives. One of the things I know, and I, I missed, I was going to ask Beth is, I know that the 2020 changed us forever. You know, I know it has. And, and, and I know that it's going to be, um, it's going to be different moving forward and we're not going to be the same. And I think remote work is going to um, maybe continue on, but maybe not, I don't know. I kind of wanted to get your guys' take on how FEXA works with remote workers and, and what your, your thoughts are on it. Sure. Uh, yeah, so our, for for Fexa, we're we're primarily remote, so it's it's sort of a part of our a part of our culture um, to, to to have that remote environment. And 
we have our daily daily standups with the team. We check in regularly. You know, it's very we're, we're we talk more electronically than we do in person. Um, it's just sort of the nature of the beast and how we operate. Um, I think. I think it's going to be interesting to see the shift. I know uh, personally, I've seen a lot of folks looking for that hybrid approach, you know, to still have a little bit of flexibility in their life, but, you know, craving that people interaction. Um, we're a lot of, we're nerds. So for us, that people interaction is a little bit different. You know, we're, we're completely fine with being behind the screen. Um, but I, I think it's definitely, it's definitely, folks are kind of craving getting back into the office a little bit while still having some of that, um, some of that virtual interaction. Nerds. <laughs> I love that. We both said it now. It must be true. It is true, and I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm good with that because I'm also nerdy. <laughs> it's so funny. I the other night, just kind of off subject, I was watching Revenge of the Nerds, which I haven't seen in so many years, and it was it was hilarious. <laughs> it, you know, nerds have changed the world, <laughs> so huh, right. I'm all about it now. It's a cool thing. You guys are cool, so it's all good. Um. You know, speaking of kind of changing the world, we, uh, I think it's interesting now that Gen Z is in the workplace and I'm interested to kind of see how things are going to change with them. Millennials, and we've talked a little bit about this in the past, but millennials, you know, I think have already changed the way that we do work every single day. Uh, and they're definitely in the workplace. Um, and you guys are probably millennials. I don't even know how old you are, but I squarely am a millennial. That is correct. There you go. See? <laughs> and self-proclaimed nerds. There you go. Uh, no, I love that. Uh, I, and I think that that's going to continue to change. Um, but how do you guys see like that next generation of workers using technology when it comes to developing relationships? Um, and what's that going to be like as a, as a cultural standpoint for, for you guys and then for the rest of FM? I think, um, I think, you know, to one of Connor's earlier points about user adoption, you know, that this generation will will prevent some of those hurdles that we have now from a user adoption. You know, we we want to be as efficient as possible and, and, you know, make things as automated as possible so that we can kind of focus on some other areas. Um, I do think, though, that, you know, there while while there is that focus from a technology standpoint, there is a, a, gen, a, a real realization about connection. Um, and it's funny, we were, we were talking internally the other day about volunteering, and I found a site called Big and Mini, um, and it's three uh, millennial entrepreneurs that basically have a virtual volunteering site. So things like that, I think, you know, it's just going to be a different way of having that personal connection, but it's out there and it exists, and we realize how, how beneficial and important it is, especially after 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think millennials have done weird things for the, the work environment, right? There, there've always been uh, all the uh, all the political cartoons and all, all of the, the grumbling from both directions. I think millennials and boomers aren't necessarily depicted as getting along incredibly well. Um, and I think that who knows if, if Gen X and, uh, and the Gen Z are gonna get along well. I'm not sure about that, but we saw a lot of changes. And I think, um, I think Gen Z is gonna be more extreme. I think, I think we're gonna see cultural changes that are really different coming out of Gen Z. And I think that in terms of uh, their use and acceptance of technology, uh, both in terms of development and consumption, it's going to blow us out of the water. I think, I think we've got some really interesting things to look forward to. And I, you know, I don't say that in a scary things are gonna change kind of way, but I think that it's hard to predict, but I see cool things coming out of the next generation. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. Um... It was interesting for me. I mean, as I'm a Gen Xer, so it was interesting for me because I get the taught by boomers and then learn the technology side of things. So I got kind of this in between world, and then everyone else is just straight technology. Like there's so much into it, and there and like you said, millennials have changed the world with what they've been doing with technology, and and they're still very passionate about cause and getting things. And I think that's even more accentuated in the Gen Z. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And, and I don't know how that's going to impact FM, but I'm really curious to see uh, how that works because it's uh, FM is a, it's, is a quite a different industry from a lot of others. Um, it takes a special type of, of person to kind of understand and get it. And, and most people are kind of thrown into it and adapt really well, but um, I'm not sure how that's going to, play out with <laughs> the Gen Z. We'll see. We'll see. I'm kind of interested. 
Um, so we got to wrap up here. We're kind of running out of time. What I'm going to do is uh, I got a couple more questions to go through and, and Connor, as we wrap up, I wanted to uh, kind of understand um, one thing that everyone needs to understand about FEXA and the most important feature or whatever you think is the biggest takeaway that people should know about FEXA today. Uh, I think that I'm going to steal something that Beth said already, which is that I think the, the most important thing about FEXA is the people. Uh, I, I'd love to sit here and talk about the technology all day, but the technology designs come from the people, the conversations come from the people, the support is from a passionate group. Uh, and that's I mean, Beth's team. Beth's team runs all of our relations with all of our clients and it's great. I think the important thing that makes FEXA stand out is that we have a group of really talented and knowledgeable individuals who are listening to the things they're being taught, the things that they're being told and seizing opportunities. And everybody here believes in the product, believes in the ideas behind it and wants to see it be the best. And I think that's, you know, I'm a little bit biased. I don't know if you know that, but I think that makes us the best. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that you're filming from a tech guy perspective and people uh, is, is your biggest thing. Um, Cause you know, most tech, People in this industry would be like, oh, we have this really cool feature. Oh, your feature is, is the culture and the people and, and what you guys do to connect with people. I, that's awesome, man. I love that. Beth, if you could give advice to an FM, what, any piece of advice, what would it be? Uh, it would be two, two quick things. So the first would be focus on exceptions uh, and leverage automation wherever possible. You know, you're always going to have the car drive through a building and someone fall through the roof at an inopportune moment, you know, but focus on the exceptions and allow a software platform to handle everything else for you. Um, and the second piece of that would be lean on data to help you make decisions. You know, some people can, may get intimidated by data or may get overwhelmed by it. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a combination of your insight and your industry knowledge that's dry, you know, with that data. So looking at a spreadsheet could be a little overwhelming, but when you know what you're looking for and you know what your goal is, use that combination of your experience to help, that, help you make smart decisions from that data. Great advice. I love that piece of advice. Uh, and then kind of wrapping up, how do people learn about FEXA? What's the best way to find out more? Best way to find out more, um, visit our website at fexa.io. And uh, you can also follow us on LinkedIn. We are affiliated with Connects, Prifma, IFMA. Um, I'm actually gonna be hosting an educational session uh, for Connects next month, focusing around smart data and that domain knowledge. So that was a little sneak peek for those of you watching the podcast, but there'll be a lot more coming. Awesome, I love that. And I'll put that in the show notes and we'll share that, make sure people know how to check that out. And I definitely will attend. So we'll see you there. Uh, from everyone here at FM Evolution, uh, the entire team, the producers, everyone, thank you guys for joining us on this show. It's been really awesome to have you back. Um, and I look forward to connecting with you guys both. Hopefully we see you at RIFMA. I don't know if you're, if you're going to be there, but I'm looking forward to that event. And uh, for everyone at home, thank you so much for joining us. If you guys are looking, uh, if you're on uh, uh, YouTube, be sure to hit the little bell to get notifications. A remind you, we have new videos out uh, and hit subscribe. And if you are on your favorite podcast platform, don't forget to leave us a comment. I'd love to start reading those comments on the air. So yours could be next. All right. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate you, Beth. Connor, thank you so much, sir. Thank you thank very you. much.